Now I will show you a couple of questions. Courtesy from Bruno, the program manager. Let's start with the general restriction. Usually, it's obvious that you cannot use a stick route or bolt route. Static route to no null zero is not permitted. If uh, you use a dynamic protocol, then uh, the stick to no zero is created uh, dynamically, uh, it's permitted. And don't remove existing feature for troubleshooting. And also for the uh, for the configuration section, of the pre configuration, you have to verify, make sure they don't put, uh, they don't make any mistakes. But uh, please don't change the existing configuration uh, of password or city -wide. If you change the password and the proper cannot verify uh, your work, uh, obviously you fail. As I mentioned, the stick to no zero is generated by dynamically, then uh, it's permitted. Now, most interesting part of this presentation, let's see the sample topology. Okay, this is double section. You can see 30 devices. You don't need to troubleshoot physical level. One topology and questions. There are questions with more than one fold. But they will for you okay so let's yes, say there's one question and they will tell there are faults in this question then you do fix both even the 10 questions with the same topology that are not tendent to each other who are expected to troubleshoot one uh, part I mean, if you fail to troubleshoot uh, the first question, it doesn't mean you cannot uh, do the uh, second question, for example. Okay. So, 10 questions. For releasing every contract, yes. It's okay if you print topology practice. This is available in this whole life, uh, as well as in this session. I don't need to replicate exactly uh, the topology. I will show you in the next slide. So from this the devices for each question, you will work only with certain number of authors who are not expected to deal with 30 devices at once. So let me show you as an example. This is the question, okay? F15, not telnet R11, loop 0. When you see this question, the CIE program is very nice. They will highlight the portion of the network where you have to deal with. So you don't have to try to find R15 or R11, for example. It will be highlighted. And you will deal only with those devices and obviously the devices in between. Okay, so you are not expected to deal with all the devices at once. You work on question number one, the topology will be highlighted. You will deal only with certain number of devices, but not 30 devices at once. And it's the same place as you can see, the same place is clear. R15 can tell net R11 loopback view, for example. Okay. Is this topology current? This is very current topology as permitted uh, to be shared by Bruno, but obviously it's not actual topology. Okay. Can we go back in troubleshooting section? Yes. You can go back in troubleshooting. You can also go back in uh, configuration section. Again, 
the request is independent to each other. So run can is about this. Can there is more than one solution? Yeah, obviously. For example, if there is access list, one solution is to remove access list. That's what I said, but this is not allowed. You will see the problem, but you will not get the point. So you need to uh, fix the access list. Uh, you want to bring your own key to system. Okay. <laughs> You don't have to. Okay, that's for the troubleshooting. Let's go to the good wait for troubleshooting. There are 10 sessions, right? And maximum time is two hours. So it means one question is 12 minutes. You need to be able to solve the problem. Each question in 12 minutes. There is no base way. The fault is always if you cannot connect R15 to R11 loop back zero. Okay, there will be something in between that's stopping you probably from routing from the access list. Okay, if it's only one fault, then it's only one fault that you need to fix. And you work with BGP, for example. In this question you will see it use BGP, so most likely uh, the question is about BGP. And you will deal only with BGP. You don't need to fix BGP and then the underlying protocol like OSF and so on. All right. So you need to do double suit. I can share later on uh, your opinion about to tell the troubleshoot in second. Let's go to the configuration so you can see this is again courtesy of Cisco Life. On the top left, you can see the official topology, there are several routers, five RDISR routers, and two RDT5C uh, switches configured as routers. The two switches in between, they are the same three, five, six switches. Okay, uh, you can see on the top right, this is the logical topology. So you know, for example, between R2 and R3, they are not connected directly. They are connected through the switch, for example. Okay. And then R5 uh, to E1 is the same thing. You see from physical topology, there is directly, so they connect through VLAN. As I mentioned, you start your lab. I, I recommend you to draw this topology. And then do the verification thing from whether you can access all the devices with the standard username and password. And then verify the IP addressing as uh, shown in the topology. Make sure it's configured properly. And then if CDP is enabled, check. See if you can see the switch and so on. You can see the other side of the interface and so on. Is there a separate primary switch? I was put, uh, maybe right now we still see uh, this family topology, but uh, I was told that uh, the relay will be, the relay switch will be removed, so even you see a primary will be built back for relay. Obviously, you don't need to do a uh, Configuration the frame switch anyway. You see they are on the um, bottom right the BG topology. Okay, uh, in troubleshooting section, uh, there is no uh, physical. The interface is always up. Okay, configure the IGP topology belong to which AS number from this topology, right? Physical usually is always is already up, uh, but again, it go quickly check IP address configure 
and then do a ping the other uh, to the other side of the interface to make sure it works before you start the lab. But you don't want to start putting configuration of OSPF and then it doesn't come up just because uh, the IP address was wrong or it was not uh, properly configured. If you have uh, issue with the pre-config or you have issues with physical uh, connectivity that you think, uh, and you will contact the doctor. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm really switching configuration. Uh, a big deal of CCIE, right? Uh, but I was told even if it's any freeway, you see the back page to test the other uh, feature in family. Okay, the next one, uh, just to show you uh, some sample questions. First one is for the OSPF, for example, I think uh, if you look at this OSPF questions, it means easy candidate to be able to do this in less than two minutes right? because uh, it's straightforward. You should be able to do it in your system. And there is a BGP question and the NPLS VPN questions. So one set of questions like this can be marked as two or three points. This program is trying to remove uh, four point questions because if the point is considered too much for uh, one set of questions. Again, there is no partial score, so when you are in the lab and you are able to answer only part of the questions, so let's say for the OSPF, you are able to bring it up, but you use network command, it means you violate the restriction and you will not get partial score, you will get so For grading system, yes, it's true, they have some auto mechanism, I saw it. But the tool is not used to define whether you pass or fail. There is a proper review. So tools is there just to help speeding up the process because uh, the CCA program is targeting no results within less than 48 hours. If proper need to do it manually, it will take time. Every day, uh, there are CCA candidates taking the lab and they need to issue uh, the job in less than 48 hours. And the proctor needs to be there to supervise the exam. So there is automatic uh, grading system, but it's not the only one used to pass or fail you. The proctor will do the review before he submits uh, the result. And remember, it has to be the work solution. I mean, you can go to Cisco uh, documentation for some questions and just copy paste the config from there. Okay, it doesn't mean you get the point. But I know they don't rely on so run to verify uh, the result. They do some software to make sure your solution is working. And if there is any restriction, for example, do not use the network man. Yes, it will uh, check uh, with run to make sure there is no net statement under OSPF. But they don't look at your configuration and compare it with their master template of configuration. That's not the way they uh, uh, or they view your result, they check the working solution. If there are any uh, questions with multiple solutions, obviously you need to understand the question. You need to honor the restriction. You need to know which one to use. Uh, it could be because of the restriction, it could be because of the way the question is asked, and uh, it could be because uh, Whatever answer you do, uh, 